Dear guests, please welcome tonight's keynote speaker, entrepreneur, philanthropist extraordinaire, Mr. Ruben Vartanian. Good evening, dear friends. I'm really very thankful to be here today with all of you in a special occasion of the celebration of the 25th anniversary of one of the, I think, most important events that happened in <clears throat> New Armenia. And um, I think it's a very symbolic to be here from representing Armenian person who was born in Armenia, grew up in Armenia, went to Russia, and now staying here with LA and talking about American University in Armenia. I think it's uh, really something very special for me, personally. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate, congratulate all the people who are here today, the president, the staff, the board members, the representative of the University of California. And uh, I will try to speak slowly, which is not easy for me. Uh, and also I have a pressure about timing, how much I can talk. That's why I will try to balance with my willingness to talk very fast and at the same time deliver the key message that I want to do today, tonight. Um, before going about the key uh, message, I want to say a few words about myself, despite I'm sure some of you read about my biography. Um, I will, like I said, I was born in Armenia with the um, family with my father was professor, my grandfather was professor, and education was always our was key uh, interest for all our families. And this is why I'm so happy to continue this tradition now, maybe being in the, from business side, not being directly involved in education, like teaching, but I continue to believe it's one of the best profession in the world is to be teacher. Um, I was living in, in the Soviet system, uh, which uh, was, very different. I was later went to Russia when the Soviet Union collapsed, and I would grow up and become investment banker in uh, New Russia, which is was wild capitalism. And I work with international clients, and I learn how to work in a system with the different standards. Where um, a lot of things is changing, and uh, I will say it's uh, one of the most important element of this all. <coughs> journey that I made with myself. It was understanding what you need to keep your identity, who you are, and learn at the same time how the situation is changing around you. And I want to pay the tribute to the people who, being so brave and so visionary in the beginning of the 90s, realizing of new Armenia, the main challenge, it will be not only electricity and water, but it's the key, the future of Armenia it will be education. And what Luis Simon and <coughs> Mirana Bavian and Stefan Haramayan, Armander Kirjan, and many others with AGBU, with the Armenian government, did it is just unbelievable. It's a, really something which we need to look back and learn again and again how it's important to be bold with your vision. Sometimes looks crazy. Sometimes it looks people will not realize what you're doing today is important about for tomorrow. And it's not being scared to do what is, you feel is right. Um, today, I want to talk about three things, about the challenges and the opportunities that we are facing, about importance of education, and about the uh, legacy. And um, <clears throat> the challenges and opportunities that we are facing is not only specific Armenian challenges. It's a world transformation happening in our <clears throat> lifetime. Um, not only Soviet Union collapsed, not only China become part of the world, and now Iran is becoming part of the world economy, and we only Cuba and North Korea left from the map of the uh, countries who is not a part of the world economy. But technology disruption, social disruption, political disruption, we see what's going in Europe, what's going in the Middle East, what's going in uh, Russia, Ukraine, what's going in U.S. with all this election which happened a couple of weeks ago, it's uh, showing transformation happening very fast. And these all transformations uh, bring some really significant questions for all of us. What will, be near, what will be our near future? What will be future of our kids? What will be, uh, what kind of system we will live? And this is the 
<coughs> type of things which scare people, and people's reactions sometimes can be quite, quite unpredictable and quite reserved. And that's why I say that looking at our history of Armenia, we've been <coughs> historically under significant pressure being in the border between civilization of the Christian Muslim, between the Roman Empire and Persians, between the Turkish and Russian and Persian empires. We've been under pressure to always survive ourselves and try to understand the changes what's happening around us and to be re respond some way. Today's Armenia is also facing some significant challenges. It's not only Armenia-like country, but Armenian nation, because during 20th century, not only genocide happened in Ottoman Empire, but afterward, the uh, Egyptian Revolution, Iranian Revolution, Lebanese uh, War, civil, now it's going in Syria. Our main <coughs> diaspora, where it was been uh, hold our heritage of hundreds of years, unfortunately be pushed, was pushed out, and now we're living in other countries, in Canada, in the US, in uh, Argentina, in Russia. And I think the question, what will be our response for this? How we, like Armenian nation, can continue to keep ourselves is a nation which is looking forward, a nation who is really showing the, something which was always our best uh, in our history, is being pioneering of many things that we did during the history of civilization and being an example of the nation who been education was number one priority, whereas people tried to uh, show what they can do, something which nobody else is doing. I think it's a very important element because the driver of those has been always two elements. It's a pride and fear. And I believe the pride which we've been proud about what we did, how we did in history, drive us many, many hundreds of years. But the question, what is will be today our pride? Is, is a pride is a successful Armenia? Is a pride is only our own family success? Is a pride is about uh, what is our contribution in other countries? Or is a pride is really how we like Armenians can deliver something to the world, not only keeping up with our own problems, our own issues about what's happened with us, but also trying to respond what's going on in the world. The same way like we responded when we, we accepted Christianity as one of the first nation, the same way like we did when we developed our own alphabet, when we did uh, one of the first publishing in the books, when we respond what was going in the world, when we travel around the globe and being the first nation who opened the trading route between China to France. The nation who really, we're not scared to do something differently, not scared to be out of the box thinking, not scared to be out of the comfort zone. And this is something which we've been doing in thousands of years. And the, today is the question is, what we are doing today is helping us to really feel what we're continuing the same way, or we changing, and something happening with us, and we are becoming different. Because we are living now in uh, much more comfort uh, conditions in uh, countries like uh, US or Canada or France or Australia or Russia, it's not anymore so much dangerous for us about uh, scare about our lives, but it's more question what we are doing in this society is how we adapt ourselves. Are we assimilating or we are staying like we've been staying in half a thousand years, our identity, keeping our identity, and the same time being good citizens of the countries where we've been living. Um, I think it's an Armenian story and what's going with Armenia is becoming very critical for all of us. We felt because of the, what's happened in the beginning of the 90s, it was earthquake, it was blockade, it was war, it was fear. It was fear what we, we, we saw how we can lose our homeland and we helped. We helped a lot. We helped despite what the problems, we tried to support and American University uh, was a very good example not only helping but, uh, economically, but also investing in the future of Armenia. But today's Armenia, and I'm sorry to be blind, is mediocre. It's okay, it's average. It's nothing going so bad what you feel in fear, and not so, bad, so good what you feel proud. And it's a question, what we need to do to make Armenia, again, the destiny what we have been dreaming of hundreds of years, saying is our El Dorado, our country which we are dreaming, the paradise when one day will be achieved because of the, our parents and grandparents left the heritage for us. And I think the question 
what kind of Armenia we want to build is becoming more and more important. Because today, unfortunately for most of us, Armenia looks like the place where you are obliged to help. It's more like tax payment, additional obligation, which I believe is wrong. Armenia for us is investment. Armenia needs to become investment for our future generation because Armenia, success of Armenia is our success. It's not the question we just need to help somebody who is in bad condition. We need to invest in the future of Armenia because successful Armenia will help us to be successful here and the vice versa. And this formula we need to accept because otherwise we'll lose Armenia and we'll lose ourselves here. This is my strong belief. And I won't, <coughs> and I won't say education will be one of the key elements of success of Armenians. We've been successful in education thousands of years. We spent our second item of expense in Armenian family been always education. We believed in education and we really invest in education, a lot of efforts. We've been speaking three languages in a time when nobody speaks, <laughs> nobody can write and read, most of the nations couldn't uh, really speak one language normally and we spoke many languages. Today, we're in danger because we lost uh, our advantage. Armenians in Armenia before speak Russian and spoke Russian now. They barely speak, speak Russian and they learning English, but not very good. They don't speak anymore Persian and Turkish and Arabic. And because part of the, in going to Beirut, the taxi driver, Armenian taxi driver will speak five languages. It will be normal. Today in Armenia, most of the, our elite don't speak uh, two languages. Not we're talking about three languages. That's why education is not only a question about is important of investment for the future, but important of investment today. In the 21st century, specifically, education becomes critical for success, not only socially, but also economically. Because main assets is not anymore land, how much land do you have, not about how much oil do you have, or how much other commodities do you have. It's a main question, how many smart people living in your country? And Elon Musk was born and grew up in South Africa, and he didn't went to the Czechia or Kenya or Russia or France, he went to the United States. And it's a question, what we need to do, what kind of a country we need to build, where despite being small, we can keep our own Elon Musk in our own country and attract other people from the region to come and study in our country and stay in our country. And I think it's one of the key challenges that we need to reflect, respond, understanding with education will be one of the key drivers of the future of the world. And we have a competitive advantage. We are a smart nation. We are a nation who has a heritage of the smart, dedicated people who really want to invest in education. Um, Armenian University, uh, American University in Armenia, I think it was a great uh, example of success. And I think the last 25 years showed what was, how it was important was type of the institution being established in Armenia, like French University, like Russian University, like German University. We have a, today, unique opportunity, competitive advantage. In Armenia today, we have a five different universities with different standards. Today, we, the Chinese government opening Chinese school in Armenia. We have a uh, Dilijan United World College. We have a IPE, we have a TUMO. We have a real project which showing we can be a regional hub for the uh, education, definitely, despite all the problems with Turkish and uh, with Turkey and Azerbaijan. That's why I, I'm a strong believer of education. I'm strong believing education is a key driver of our success for the future. And also, I believe education needs to become in the next level. I think the American University in Armenia needs to become not only good for Armenians who live in Armenia, not only attract Armenians from other parts of the world come to study, but also non-Armenians come to study in Armenia. I think it's one of the next challenges that I, will, I want to wish all of us to celebrate uh, 50 university, uh, American University in Armenia with the understanding we will get non-Armenian uh, kids to study in our university in Armenia. This is why with, with my wife, you know, we established United World College in Dilijan with many of our colleagues and friends. We got kids from 72 countries studying in Armenia. We get special um, <clears throat> scholarship system, which uh, attracting kids from all over the world to come to Armenia, study in Armenia. And also realizing importance of the what's going today in the Middle East, where it's been our homeland for many of our families. Unfortunately, the crisis came back the same places that we've been uh, suffering after genocide. And uh, today was going in Syria, unfortunately repeating the same stories. And we are facing the situation when the 
We need to remember this. In 100 years ago, many Arab families helped us, despite we've been not very rich, not being very successful. We've been quite poor people, but they helped our grandparents. This is why a year ago we established the special scholarship fund for 100 kids to, to study in Armenia and outside of Syria and Lebanon and Iraq, orphan, orphan kids to study in the United World Code system. Today I want to make an announcement that we will also want to establish special scholarship fund for kids from Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, non-Armenian, to study in Armenia in our American University in Armenia. <laughs> because I believe the only <clears throat> integration, only global, only being a uh, regional hub who can help us, Armenia, to become successful. Um, I want to say also with my wife, Veronica, we're spending a lot of time and uh, I think one of the reasons why I invited here, because she's a board member, not me. <laughs> I'm benefiting being spouse of the board member. <laughs> I want to pay tribute to the people, individuals who made a lot for Armenian, Armenian world, like, like of course, Boaz, uh, Nobar, uh, Gulbekian, Alex Manukian and his family with Louis Simon and Richard Manukian, and Kerker Korean. The one thing I want to say about this, what we are happening with our, our legacy is not only a question what we need to remember and we need to respect and we need to pay tribute to the people. Also, we need to understand what our <coughs> duties to be ready to support this type of activities because they did a lot of projects to try to preserve Armenian nation. But this project needs to be supported by today's generation because what we will leave to the next generation is very critical for us. We are growing up in a non-war, non-crisis situation, whereas the, our kids feel less pressure to uh, support Armenian heritage. Where some of them are doing very well, some of them question why they need to continue to stay on the Armenian route. And we'll stay on the Armenian route, like I said, only we'll be proud to be Armenian and understanding it's very important to support Armenian heritage because what was done by generations. And I think it's um, <clears throat> important for us to collaborate, to come together. It's one of the most difficult part for all of us because we are survivors. And survivors, unfortunately, like was in, we, we saw it just in the movie, which was uh, great, it was done by uh, Eric Isan and his uh, partners and uh, Kirk's uh, legacy, it's about how to survive is a different behavior. We need to go from survival to prosperity. This is a very difficult mental transformation for all of us because survival mood is, means think small, family oriented, very close mindset. Don't look big ideas. Don't go big from uh, your project and try to build step by step like we're building our houses. One more room, one more room, one more room, adding to the houses. This is the typical Armenian in Armenians. This is why we need to change our mindset. And this is most difficult to change mindset. It's not a question about money. We made the analysis what needs to be done to become Armenian, bring Armenia prosper. We need to invest the next 15 years, $8.5 billion. And this number will look like a crazy number. And people say, it's unbelievable. We cannot do it. But I want to tell you, last 15 years in Armenia, Different people in different institutions invest $5 billion. Okay, this is not a big difference. The only difference is not being coordination. It was not collaborations. Because when you are <coughs> in survival, you're trying to stay yourself. And this is the family only support you and you don't trust anyone. We need to trust each other. Collaboration means compromise. We are individualistic. We are very, each of us believe that our ego is number one. We need to understand our elite today is responsible for bringing us collaborations, one of the key elements of success of future our nation. And I'm hoping with the Vache Manukyan, Samuel Karpetyan from Russia, who is my friend, um, leading leaders of the AGBU, leaders of the Shnaktusin, leaders of other parties, leaders of Armenian government, we, need, we realize we cannot be successful without collaboration. We cannot be successful without coming together and trying to find a platform which will help us to make the new Armenia and new Armenian world. You know, we all, know, uh, we all uh, remember this type of sentence when 
uh, Kennedy said. Kennedy said, the victory is a thousand of parents, and uh, the def defeat is, a, uh, is orphan. And we've been so many hundreds of years orphan. We are not ready to be thousands of parents. This is, I think, we need to learn what we are winner. We are winner in Artsakh war. And I want to remind you, it's a one, it's a main ornament. We are winner of the Artsakh war. We are winner of Armenian independence. And, and winner, and people who feel we're winner, uh, what, what, mean, what's to mean, what's means to be winner, what's to means to be prosperity thinker. It means you are thinking big, you have big ambitions, but also you're trying to understand what is your competitive advantage, how you can execute these advantages, how you can bring us all in the global world, which is very, very competitive. Nobody waiting us and saying, oh, when is Armenia finally will come prosper? Nobody wants to look at us and say, how we can help Armenia become prosper? It's our duty to make Armenia prosper. It's our duty to make Armenian diaspora successful in different parts of the world and help Syrian Armenians, help uh, Armenians in Argentina and uh, in America or Canada to feel it's a part of the big global network. I think you, most of you read it about our statement, our letter in the New York Times, which was written by me, Nubara Feyan, my partner, which we did a lot of projects together, and many other my friends and partners, and I'm very thankful to Ed Jirajan, Charlie, and many other people, Sam Simonian, who is sitting here, about global Armenians. And I think it's a very important point, which I want to finish my speech today, saying global Armenian is not just a statement. It's a question to change our mentality, to change our behavior, to change our, how we behave and how we're doing the, all the businesses together. And I hope it's global Armenian will be bringing this type of the new type of the relationship because we don't have so much time. The, the world is changing dramatically and the world is changing very quickly. The only way we can become successful is we come together, we'll invest in education, we'll invest in our own future, understanding what is our key competitive advantages? Bring Armenia is regional hub for education, healthcare, technology, finance, tourism. Making Armenian diaspora feel this is the investment, is not obligation. Bringing the new generation feel proud to be Armenian, not only feel obliged to be Armenian because the grandfather or father was Armenian, and feel what what we're doing is really building our future. And I want to finish my my speech with the sentence which was said by Peter Drucker. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Thank you.